Are you tired of feeling like your happiness depends on others? Are you ready to break free from the cycle of emotional dependence and find true inner peace? In this video, we will explore how Buddhist teachings can help you break free from emotional dependency and find true inner peace and self-reliance. Let's embark on a journey towards self-discovery and empowerment together. Lesson 1. Take responsibility for your own cheerleading. When we rely on others for our happiness, we give them power over our emotions. We become like a leaf in the wind, blown about by the whims of others. This is a recipe for suffering, as the Buddha taught. The people we depend on may not always be available, or they may not always respond in the way we want them to. When this happens, we feel let down, hurt, or angry. We may even feel betrayed. But the truth is, we are the ones who have betrayed ourselves by giving others control over our emotions. Taking responsibility for our own happiness means becoming our own cheerleader. It means learning to validate ourselves, to encourage ourselves, and to comfort ourselves. It means recognizing that we have the power to choose our thoughts and feelings and that we are not at the mercy of external circumstances. This is not to say that we should isolate ourselves from others or reject their support. Buddhism teaches us the importance of community and connection, but it also teaches us the importance of self-reliance. As the Buddha said, no one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. So how can we become our own cheerleader? Mindfulness is a practice that helps us become aware of our thoughts and feelings without judgment, allowing us to choose how we respond to them. It helps us avoid emotional dependence and recognize when we seek validation from others. Self-compassion is a practice that treats ourselves with kindness and understanding, allowing us to accept ourselves with all our strengths and weaknesses. Cultivating self-compassion reduces our dependence on others for validation, teaches us to validate ourselves, recognize our worth and unconditionally love ourselves. Both practices can help us become our own cheerleaders. Inner strength is the ability to face life's challenges with courage and resilience. It comes from a deep sense of self-worth and self-confidence. When we develop inner strength, we become less dependent on others for support. We learn to support ourselves, to rely on our own resources, and to trust in our own abilities. Boundaries are the limits we set to protect our physical, emotional, and mental well-being. They help us maintain our integrity and autonomy. When we set healthy boundaries, we become less dependent on others for validation and approval. We learn to respect ourselves, to assert our needs, and to say no when necessary. So. Taking responsibility for our own happiness is a crucial step towards breaking free from emotional dependence. It requires us to become our own cheerleader, to validate ourselves, to comfort ourselves, and to encourage ourselves. It requires us to cultivate self-compassion, to develop inner strength, to practice gratitude, and to set healthy boundaries. Lesson 2. Get to know yourself. In Buddhism, the concept of self-understanding is a critical step towards enlightenment. It's essential to spend time alone, meditate, and reflect on our thoughts, feelings, and actions. This self-awareness helps us understand our emotional dependencies and gives us the insight to overcome them. The Buddha once said, The only real failure in life is not to be true to the best one knows. This quote emphasizes the importance of self-awareness and understanding. To be true to ourselves, we must first know ourselves. But what does it mean to know oneself? It means understanding our thoughts, feelings, and actions. It means recognizing our strengths and weaknesses, our desires and fears, our values and beliefs. It means being aware of our emotional triggers and reactions and understanding why we react the way we do. One of the most powerful tools for self-understanding in Buddhism is meditation. Meditation allows us to quiet our minds and focus on the present moment. It helps us observe our thoughts and feelings without judgment and gain insight into our true nature. 
through meditation we can cultivate mindfulness, which is the practice of being fully present and engaged in the current moment. Mindfulness allows us to observe our thoughts and feelings as they arise without getting caught up in them. This can help us break free from negative thought patterns and emotional dependencies. Self-reflection can be uncomfortable, but it's a necessary part of personal growth. It allows us to gain insight into our behavior and make changes where necessary. It helps us understand our emotional dependencies and take steps to overcome them. In addition to meditation and self-reflection, there are other practices that can help us get to know ourselves better. Journaling, for example, can be a powerful tool for self-discovery. It allows us to express our thoughts and feelings in a safe and private space and gain clarity and perspective on our experiences. It's important to remember that self-understanding is a journey, not a destination. It's a lifelong process of learning and growth. As we change and evolve, our understanding of ourselves will also change and evolve. But the benefits of self-understanding are immeasurable. When we know ourselves, we're better able to manage our emotions and relationships. We're more resilient in the face of adversity and more confident in our abilities. We're more compassionate towards ourselves and others and more capable of finding true happiness and inner peace. So, how can we get to know ourselves better? Set aside time each day to meditate, even if it's just for a few minutes. Focus on your breath and observe your thoughts and feelings without judgment. Cultivate mindfulness in your daily life by focusing on the present moment. Pay attention to your senses, your breath and your surroundings. Take time each day to reflect on your experiences, your relationships and your behavior. Ask yourself tough questions and be honest with yourself. By cultivating self-awareness through meditation, mindfulness, self-reflection, journaling and therapy, we can gain insight into our emotions and behavior and take steps to overcome. Lesson 3. Determine a decision for yourself. Once we understand our emotional dependencies, we need to make a conscious decision to change. This decision should come from a place of self-love and compassion, not self-judgment. Remember, the path to enlightenment is a journey, not a destination. It's okay to take small steps and to stumble along the way. The first step in determining a decision for ourselves is to acknowledge our emotional dependencies. This can be a difficult process as it requires us to confront our fears, insecurities and vulnerabilities. However, it is only by acknowledging these dependencies that we can begin to understand their root causes and work towards overcoming them. Once we have acknowledged our emotional dependencies, the next step is to reflect on why we have become dependent on others for our happiness and well-being. This reflection can help us gain insight into our thoughts, feelings and behaviors and identify any patterns or beliefs that may be contributing to our emotional dependence. For example, we may realize that we have developed a belief that we are not worthy of love or happiness unless we are in a relationship. This belief may have led us to seek validation and affection from others, making us emotionally dependent on them. By recognizing this belief, we can begin to challenge it and develop a more compassionate and realistic view of ourselves. After reflecting on our emotional dependencies, the next step is to set an intention to change. This intention should be clear, specific and achievable. For example, we may set an intention to develop a more positive self-image, to practice self-care regularly, or to cultivate healthy relationships with others. Setting an intention is important, as it gives us a sense of direction and purpose. It also helps us stay motivated and focused on our goal, even when faced with challenges or setbacks. However, it is important to remember that change takes time and effort and that it is okay to take small steps towards our goal. Once we have set an intention, the next step is to take action towards achieving it. This may involve seeking support from a therapist or counselor, practicing mindfulness and meditation, or developing new habits and behaviors. Whatever action we choose to take, it is important to approach it with a sense of compassion, 
patience and self-awareness. As we take action towards overcoming our emotional dependencies, it is important to monitor our progress and adjust our approach as needed. This may involve setting new goals, seeking additional support or modifying our behaviors and habits. It is also important to celebrate our successes, no matter how small they may seem, as they are a testament to our commitment and effort. Right intention involves cultivating a sincere and compassionate desire to overcome suffering and achieve spiritual growth. By determining a decision for ourselves and setting an intention to overcome our emotional dependencies, we are aligning ourselves with this path and taking a step towards true happiness and inner peace. However, it is important to remember that the decision to change must come from a place of self-love and compassion, not self-judgment or criticism. We must approach ourselves with kindness and understanding, recognizing that our emotional dependencies are a natural response to our experiences and conditioning. As the Buddha said, you can search throughout the entire universe for someone who is more deserving of your love and affection than you are yourself. And that person is not to be found anywhere. You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. By acknowledging our emotional dependencies, reflecting on their root causes, setting an intention to change, taking action towards achieving it, and monitoring our progress, we can break free from the cycle of emotional dependence and cultivate a deeper sense of self-love, compassion, and inner peace. Remember, the journey towards emotional independence is a personal one and it may take time and effort to overcome our emotional dependencies. However, with patience, compassion and determination, we can achieve true happiness and inner peace. Lesson 4. Make your self-care a priority. In the teachings of Buddhism, self-care is not seen as a luxury, but as a necessity for mental, emotional and spiritual well-being. It's about treating ourselves with the same kindness, compassion and respect that we would treat others. When we prioritize self-care, we're better able to manage our emotions, reduce stress and break free from emotional dependence on others. Let's delve deeper into this important lesson. Self-care is any activity that we do deliberately in order to take care of our mental, emotional and physical health. Although it's a simple concept in theory, it's something we very often overlook. Good self-care is key to improved mood and reduced anxiety. It's also key to a good relationship with oneself and others. Self-care is seen as an essential part of the spiritual path. The Buddha himself emphasized the importance of taking care of the body, saying, to keep the body in good health is a duty. Otherwise, we shall not be able to keep our mind strong and clear. This emphasis on physical health is reflected in the Buddhist practice of mindful eating, exercise, and rest. Mindful eating involves paying full attention to the experience of eating and drinking, both inside and outside the body. It's about noticing the colors, smells, flavors, and textures of your food, chewing slowly and thoroughly, and learning to recognize and respond to your body's signals of hunger and fullness. By eating mindfully, we can improve our digestion, enjoy our food more, and develop a healthier relationship with food. Exercise, too, is an important part of self-care in Buddhism. The Buddha himself was a strong advocate for regular physical activity, saying, Exercise is good for your constitution. In Buddhism, exercise is seen not just as a way to keep the body healthy, but also as a way to cultivate mindfulness. Activities like yoga, tai chi, and qigong, which combine physical movement with mindfulness and breath control, are particularly popular among Buddhists. Rest is another crucial aspect of self-care. In our fast-paced, always-on culture, it's easy to overlook the importance of rest. But as the Buddha said, rest is not idleness and to lie sometimes on the grass under trees on a summer's day, listening to the murmur of the water, or watching the clouds float across the sky, is by no means a waste of time. In Buddhism, rest is seen as a way to recharge the body and mind, 
and to cultivate a sense of peace and tranquility. In addition to physical self-care, Buddhism also emphasizes the importance of mental and emotional self-care. This includes practices like meditation, mindfulness, and self-compassion. Meditation is a key part of Buddhist practice. It's a way to calm the mind, develop concentration, and cultivate insight. In meditation, we learn to observe our thoughts and emotions without judgment and to cultivate a sense of inner peace and tranquility. This can be particularly helpful for those struggling with emotional dependence, as it helps us to see our thoughts and emotions for what they are, temporary, fleeting phenomena that do not define us. Mindfulness, too, is a crucial part of Buddhist self-care. Mindfulness involves paying attention to the present moment without judgment. It's about being fully engaged in whatever we're doing, whether it's eating, walking, or washing the dishes. By practicing mindfulness, we can reduce stress, improve focus, and cultivate a greater sense of well-being. Self-compassion is another important aspect of Buddhist self-care. In Buddhism, self-compassion is seen as a way to counteract the harmful effects of self-criticism and self-judgment. It involves treating ourselves with kindness, understanding, and forgiveness, just as we would treat a dear friend. This can be particularly helpful for those struggling with emotional dependence, as it helps us to develop a healthier, more loving relationship with ourselves. By taking care of our physical, mental, and emotional health, we can develop a greater sense of inner peace, well-being, and independence. As the Buddha said, you can search throughout the entire universe for someone who is more deserving of your love and affection than you are yourself, and that person is not to be found anywhere. You, yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. So let's make self-care a priority, not just for our own sake, but for the sake of all beings. Lesson 5. Enjoy being alone. Buddhism teaches us that solitude is not loneliness, but an opportunity for self-reflection and growth. When we learn to enjoy our own company, we become less dependent on others for companionship and validation. As the Buddha said, thousands of candles can be lighted from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. The first step towards enjoying solitude is to understand its value. In Buddhism, solitude is seen as a necessary step towards enlightenment. It provides us with the space and time to reflect on our thoughts, feelings, and actions, and to gain a deeper understanding of ourselves. As the Buddha said, a man who is not at peace with himself cannot be at peace with others. However, enjoying solitude is not about isolating ourselves from others or rejecting human connection. Rather, it's about finding a balance between social interaction and alone time. It's about understanding that we don't need to be constantly surrounded by people to be happy. As the Buddha said, Solitude is not the absence of company, but the moment when our soul is free to speak to us and help us decide what to do with our life. So how can we learn to enjoy being alone? Being alone doesn't have to mean being bored. Use this time to engage in activities you enjoy, whether it's reading, writing, painting, or going for a walk. This not only helps to pass the time, but also helps you to connect with yourself and your interests. Solitude provides us with the perfect opportunity to reflect on our thoughts and feelings. Take this time to journal, meditate, or simply think about your life, your goals, and your values. This self-reflection can lead to greater self-awareness and personal growth. In our noisy world, silence can be a rare and precious commodity. When you're alone, embrace the silence, listen to the sounds of nature, or simply enjoy the peace and quiet. This can help to calm your mind and reduce stress. Being alone can sometimes lead to negative self-talk or feelings of loneliness. When this happens, practice self-compassion. Treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding you would offer to a friend. Remember, it's okay to feel lonely sometimes. It's a natural human emotion and it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. 
In Buddhism, solitude is seen as a time for spiritual growth. Use this time to read spiritual texts, meditate, or engage in other spiritual practices. This can help you to connect with something greater than yourself and find a sense of peace and purpose. Finally, remember that it's okay to be alone. In our society, there's often a stigma attached to being alone, as if it's a sign of failure or rejection. However, Buddhism teaches us that solitude is a natural and necessary part of life. As the Buddha said, the quieter you become, the more you can hear. By enjoying being alone is not about rejecting human connection, but about finding a balance between social interaction and solitude. It's about understanding the value of solitude and using this time for self-reflection, personal growth and spiritual development. So, next time you find yourself alone, don't fear it. Embrace it. Use it as an opportunity to connect with yourself and find inner peace. Lesson 6. Feel better about yourself. Buddhism teaches us the importance of cultivating self-love and self-compassion. This is a crucial step towards breaking free from emotional dependence on others. When we feel good about ourselves, we're less likely to seek validation and approval from others. We become our own source of happiness and inner peace. Self-love and self-compassion are not about becoming self-centered or arrogant. Rather, it's about accepting ourselves as we are. With all our strengths and weaknesses, our successes and failures, it's about treating ourselves with the same kindness, understanding and forgiveness that we would offer to a dear friend. So how can we cultivate self-love and self-compassion? Loving-kindness meditation is a practice of cultivating unconditional love and compassion for ourselves and others. It involves repeating phrases of love and compassion, such as, May I be happy, may I be healthy, may I be peaceful. This practice helps us develop a positive attitude towards ourselves and others. Comparing ourselves to others is a sure way to undermine our self-love and self-compassion. In Buddhism, this is seen as a form of ignorance that leads to suffering. Instead of comparing ourselves to others, we should focus on our own journey and our own growth. We all have flaws and make mistakes. That's part of being human. Instead of criticizing ourselves for our imperfections, we should accept them with compassion. Remember, it's our imperfections that make us unique and beautiful. Gratitude is a powerful tool for cultivating self-love and self-compassion. When we focus on the things we're grateful for, we shift our attention away from our flaws and towards our strengths and blessings. This helps us develop a more positive self-image. We all make mistakes. It's part of life. Instead of beating ourselves up for our mistakes, we should forgive ourselves and learn from them. Remember, it's not the mistake that defines us, but how we respond to it. Our body is our temple. It's important to take care of it through healthy eating, regular exercise and adequate rest. When we take care of our body, we're showing ourselves love and respect. The people we surround ourselves with can have a big impact on our self-love and self-compassion. It's important to cultivate relationships with people who uplift us, support us and inspire us to be our best selves. Self-reflection is a powerful tool for cultivating self-love and self-compassion. It involves looking inward and examining our thoughts, feelings and actions. This helps us develop a deeper understanding of ourselves and our patterns of behavior. Remember, cultivating self-love and self-compassion is a journey, not a destination. It takes time, patience and practice. But with commitment and perseverance, you can learn to love and accept yourself just as you are. And when you do, you'll find that you're less dependent on others for your happiness and well-being. Lesson 7. Make goals and reach them. The seventh lesson in our journey towards emotional independence is the importance of setting and achieving goals. This is a crucial aspect of Buddha's teachings, which emphasize the value of purposeful action and personal growth. When we set goals for ourselves, we give our lives a sense of direction and purpose. We have something to strive for, something to focus our energy and attention on. 
This can be particularly helpful when we're trying to break free from emotional dependence as it gives us a positive alternative to focusing on our need for validation or support from others. However, it's important to remember that the process of setting and achieving goals should be rooted in self-compassion and mindfulness. We should not set goals that are unrealistic or overly demanding, as this can lead to frustration and self-criticism. Instead, we should set goals that challenge us but are within our reach, and we should approach these goals with a spirit of patience and self-kindness. Moreover, the goals we set should not be driven by a desire for external validation or recognition. Instead, they should reflect our own values and aspirations. This is in line with the Buddhist teaching of right effort, which involves putting forth effort not for the sake of gaining something external, but for the sake of personal growth and spiritual development. So, how can we go about setting and achieving goals in a way that supports our journey towards emotional independence? Before setting any goals, take some time to reflect on what truly matters to you. What are your values? What are your aspirations? What kind of person do you want to be? Use these reflections to guide your goal-setting process. SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant and Time-Bound. Setting SMART goals can help ensure that your goals are clear, realistic and achievable. Large goals can often feel overwhelming. By breaking down your goals into smaller, more manageable steps, you can make the process of achieving them feel less daunting. As you work towards your goals, practice mindfulness. This means staying present and focused on the task at hand rather than getting caught up in worries about the future or regrets about the past. It's important to celebrate your progress, no matter how small. This can help boost your motivation and self-confidence and can make the process of achieving your goals feel more enjoyable. Remember the journey towards emotional independence is not a race. It's okay to take your time and it's okay to make mistakes. What's important is that you keep moving forward with patience and compassion for yourself. By setting goals that reflect our values and aspirations, and by working towards these goals with mindfulness and self-compassion, we can cultivate a sense of purpose and accomplishment that is independent of external validation or support. By following these lessons inspired by Buddhism, we can learn to break free from this cycle and find inner peace and independence.